Beowulf Part 32, The Horde and the Dragon. He sought of himself who solely who sorely did harm him, but for need very pressing, the servant of one of the sons of the heroes Haplos evaded, seeking for shelter, and the sin-driven warrior took refuge within there. He early looked in it, when the onset surprised him, he, a gem vessel, saw there many of such like ancient ornaments in the earth cave were lying. As in the days of yore, some one of the men of illustrious lineage, as legacy monstrous, there had secreted them, careful and thoughtful, dear valued jewels. Death have aught snatched them in the days of the past, and the one man, moreover, of the flower of the folk who fared there the longest, was fain to defer it, friend mourning wander, a little longer to be left in enjoyment of long-lasting treasure. A barrow already stood on the plain, the stream currents nigh to, new by the ness edge, aneath of approaching, the keeper of rings carried within a ponderous deal of the treasures of nobles, of gold that was beaten, briefly he spake then. Hold thou, O earth, now heroes no more may, the earnings of earlmen, lo, erst thy bosom, worthy men won them, war death hath ravished. Precious, perilous life bale, all my warriors, liegemen beloved, who this life have forsaken, who hall pleasures saw, no sword bearer have I, and no one to burnish the gold plated vessel. The high valued beaker, my heroes are vanished. The hardy helmet be hung with gilding, shall be reaved of its riches. The ring cleansers slumber, who were charged to have ready visors for battle. And the burnie that bided in battle encounter, or a breaking of war shields, the bite of the edges, molds with the hero. The ring twisted armor, its lord being lifeless, no longer may journey. Hanging by heroes, harp joy is vanished. The rapture of glee wood, no excellent falcon, swoops through the building. No swift-footed charger grindeth the gravel. A grievous destruction, no few of the world folk widely hath scattered. So, woeful of spirit one after all, lamented mournfully, moaning in sadness by day and by night, till death with its billows dashed on his spirit. Then, the ancient dusk scather, so the fire dragon, found the great treasure standing all open, he who flaming and fiery flies to the barrows, naked war dragon, nightly escapeth, encompassed with fire, men under heaven widely beheld him. Tis said he looks for the hoard of the earth, where old he is guarding, the heathenish treasure, he'll be no wise the better, so three hundred winters in the waster of peoples, held upon earth that excellent hoard hell, till the forementioned earlman angered him bitterly. The beet-plated beaker he bare to his chieftain, and fullest remission for all of his reminiscences be begged of his liege lord. Then the hoard was discovered, the treasure was taken, his petition was granted, the lorn-mooded liegeman, his lord regarded, the old work of the earth folk, t'was the earliest occasion. When the dragon awoke, the strife was renewed there. So they plundered the dragon's den. He snuffed long the stone then. Stout heart found he the footprint of foemen. Too far he had gone, with cunning craftiness close to the head of the fire-spewing dragon. So, undoomed, he may escape from anguish and exile with ease who possesseth the favor of heaven. The horde warden eagerly searched o'er the ground then, would be met with the person that caused him sorrow while in slumbering reclining. Gleaming and wild, he oft went round the cavern, all of it outward. Not yet of earthmen was seen in that desert. Yet he joyed in the battle, rejoiced in the conflict. Off he turned to the barrow, sought for the gem cup. This he soon perceived then, that some man or other had discovered the, had discovered the gold the famous folk treasure. Not fain did the horde waiting wait until evening. Then the ward of the barrel was angry in spirit. The loathed one wished to pay for the dear valued drink cup with fire. Then the day was done, and as the dragon would have it, he no longer would wait on the wall, but departed, fire impelled, flaming. Fearful the start was to earls on the land, as it early thereafter to their giver of gold was grievously ended. The dragon's real mad. So we are on part 33, 
brave through aged reminisces. The stranger began then to vomit forth fire, to burn the great manor, the blaze then glimmered. For anguish to Earlman, not anything living, was the hateful air-goer willing to leave there. The war of the worm wildly was noticed, widely was noticed. The feud of the foemen afar and anear, how the enemy injured the earls of the gatemen, harried with hatred, back he hied to the treasure, to the well-hidden cave ere the coming of daylight. He had circled with fire the folk of these regions, with brand and burning in the barrow he trusted, in the wall and his war might, the weaning deceived him. Then straight was the horror to Beowulf published, early forsooth that his own native homestead, the best of buildings, was burning and melting, gift seat of the Geatmen. Twas a grief to the spirit of the good-mooded hero, the greatest of sorrows, the wise one weaned then that the wielding his kingdom against the ancient commandments he had bitterly angered. The Lord everlasting, with lorn meditations, his bosom welled inward, and was no wise his custom. The fire-spewing dragon fully had wasted the fastness of warriors, the water land outward, the manor with fires, the, rule, the folk ruling hero, prince of the wetters, was planning to wreck him, the warman's defender bade them to make him, earlman's eighthling, an excellent war shield, holy of iron. Fully he knew then that wood from the forest was helpless to aid him. Shield against fire. The long, worthy ruler must live in the last of his limited earth days, of life in the world, and the worm along with him, though long ha had been holding hoard wealth in plenty. Then the ring prince disdained to seek with a war band, with army extensive, the air going ranger. He felt no fear of the foeman's assaults, and counted for little the might of the dragon, his power and prowess, for previously dared he a heap of hostility, hazardous daggers, war thane when Hrothgar's palace he cleansed. Conquering combatant, clutched in the battle, the kinsman of Grendel, of kindred detested. Twas of hand fights not least when Higlak was slaughtered, when the king of the Geatmen with clashings of battle, friend lo lord of folks in Frisian dominions, offspring of Herethril, perished through sword drink, with battle swords beaten, thence Beowulf came then on self-help relying, swam through the waters, he bare on his arm, lone going, thirty outfits of armor when the ocean he mounted. Of het wars by no means had need to be boastful, of their fighting afoot, who forewarned meet him, carried their war shields, not many returned from the brave mooted battle knight back to their homesteads. Ikagout's <laughs> barren, o'er the brightest course swam then, lone goer lorn to his land folk returning, where higed to him tender treasure and kingdom, rings and dominion, her son she not trusted, to be able to keep the kingdom devised against alien races on the death of King Higlek. Yet the sad one succeeded not in persuading Aethling in any way ever to act as Caesarian to Hedred, or, or promise to govern the kingdom, yet with friendly counsel and the folk he sustained him, gracious with honor, till he grew to be older, wielder the weathers, wide fleeing outlaws, Othier's sons sought him o'er the waters. They had stirred a revolt against the helm of the Skyflings. The best of the sea kings, who in Swedish dominions distributed treasure, distinguished folk leader. Twas the end of his earth days, injury fatal, by swing of the sword as he received as a greeting, offspring of Higlak, on Glentho's baron, later departed to visit his homestead, when Heardred was dead, let Beowulf rule them, govern the Geatmen. Good was that folk king. And now we are on part 34. Beowulf seeks the dragon and Beowulf's reminiscence. He planned requital for the folk leader's ruin in days thereafter, to Eadgil's the wretched becoming an enemy. Othier's son then went with a war troop o'er the wide stretching currents with warriors and weapons. With woe journeys cold, he avenged him, the king's life he took. So he came off uninjured from all of his battles, perilous sprites, offspring of Egothio, from his deeds of daring, till that day most momentous, when he fate driven fared to fight the dragon. With eleven companions, the prince of the Geatmen went lowering with fury to look at the fire drake. Inquiring he'd found, the feud had arisen, hate to his heroes, 
the highly famed gem vessel was brought to his keep through the hand of the informer that in the throng was 13th of heroes that caused the beginning of conflict so bitter, captive and wretched, M must sad mooded thenceward point out the palace he passed then unwillingly to the spot where he knew of the notable cavern, the cave under earth not far from the ocean, the anger of eddies, which inward was full of jewels and wires, a warden uncanny. Warrior weaponed, warded of the treasure, old under earth, no easy possession, for any of earth folk access to get to. Then the battle brave Aethling sat on the nay's edge while the gold friend of Geatman gracious saluted his fireside companions. Woeful was his spirit, death boding, wavering, weird very near him, who must seize the old hero, his sole treasure look for, dragging aloof his life from his body. Not flesh hidden long was the folk leader's spirit, Beowulf spake, Igothro's son. I survived in my youth days many a conflict, hours of onset, that all I remember. I was seven winters old when the jewel prince took me, high lord of heroes, at the hands of my father. Herethro, the king hero, had me in keeping, gave me treasure and feasting, our kinship remembered. Not ever was I any less dear to him, knight in the burrows, than the bairns of his household. Herobald and Haislin and Heglach mine, to the eldest unjustly by acts of a kinsman, was murdered bed-strewn, since him Haislinth hasten, hasten, from Hornbow, his sheltering chieftain shot with an arrow, erred in his arm, aim, and injured his kinsman. One brother the other, with blood-sprinkled spear, t'was a feeless fight, finished in malice. Sad to his spirit, the folk prince, however, had to part from existence with vengeance undertaken. So one of the brothers accidentally killed the other. So, to whore-headed hero, tis heavily crushing, to live to see his son as he rideth, young on the gallows, then measures he chanteth, a song of sorrow, when his son is hanging for the raven's delight, and aged and ory, he is unable to offer any assistance. Every morning his offspring's departure is constant recalled. He cares not to wait for the birth of an heir in his burrow enclosures, since that one through death pain in the deeds hath experienced. His heart grieved beholds in the house of his son, the wine building wasted, the wine lodging places reaved of their roaring, the riders are sleeping, the nights in the grave, there's no sound of the harp wood, joy in the yards as of yore were familiar.